This is a video about my fuck ups, things and mistakes that I made, which led to my business as a videographer not working. These are like things that are personal to me. It's very subjective, things that I did and things that I've learned that I think have helped me now. So this is for my sort of younger 18 year old self who didn't know what the hell I was trying to do and was just trying to figure it all out. My first point, my first point, spending way too much time on making the videos and the art, the art, and not spending enough time learning about sales and marketing of my services. Oh my God, someone's paying me to create something cool and to create something I love. Um, I'm just gonna put tons of time into it. I basically would do a video and get it out, spend way too much time on it, way, way, way too much time on it, uh, do tons of unnecessary shit that was just like, you know, sort of important with learning the process of making videos. I wish someone had told me like, hey dude, like you can make videos, making the videos is the kind of easier part. Like now you got to learn how to sell and get people to buy your service and product. So this is something I wish I had learned earlier. The next thing that I'd learned the hard way many, many times is not setting deadlines and not writing contracts. You're probably gonna think, duh, like stupid, like why didn't you do that? When you're young and stupid and you're trying to figure out how to do business, like again, I was just so happy for so long to just like have someone pay me to make cool videos. Like I didn't know you could earn money through videography. I had no concept. I was just doing it for fun. What I started to realize as I started to turn it into work and take on more and more people, more clients, more gigs, was that oftentimes people wouldn't pay on time. They'd pay very, very late. And I realized very soon that I needed to not get f***ed over continuously by people who, one, don't pay, two, pay very late, or three, delay projects because they're not ready to essentially act on it and give you the feedback required to finish it. So something I've tried to do a lot more in the past few years is really be super clear and develop a contract, even if it's a small one, to state that there's a deadline that needs to be worked towards. So to solve this problem, one can try to, from my experience, create a deadline within the contract and then also create a penalty for the client if that deadline is not met or some form of clause where you can actually get out an exit clause. For example, you keeping 50% of the project budget if you've shot it already and they're just like, okay, I don't want this edited anymore. We don't have no need for this video. Then at least you have a way to get out and a way for you to get on with other and a way for you to get on with other projects and get on with your life. Just wish that contracts didn't seem like such a scary thing for me when I was younger. I wish I'd just done it earlier. Anyways. The next thing that I wish I'd learned was how to negotiate and how to actually problem solve with a client. I'm really not an expert in negotiation whatsoever. I'm not claiming to be. It's really the deal breaker between you settling for a budget or price that is workable or a budget and a price that's just making you feel stressed or making you feel like you're not getting paid enough. A call from my younger self would have been like, yo, Nico, we've got a project. Uh, we've got 500 euros. Do you want to do it? I would have just been like, sure. Give me 500 euros. With no way of knowing what the fuck I'm really trying to achieve with this shoot, what their actual intention is with this project, what their budget is actually. Yeah, I, I just would just have said, yeah. And I think my role as a videographer is to actually figure out and create value through the video that I'm making for them. So to go with the negotiation thing now, and approaching this, like my solution perhaps, is I would ask like, why, why, why? Why do you want a video? Why does it need to be done by the end of the month? Just keep digging deeper and working with the client to figure out the real problem. And then I would always just create a sense of urgency as to what happens now if you did not create this video for your product? What would happen to your business? By creating this sense of urgency and showing to the client the, uh, the problem that is at hand and what happens if we don't solve it, um, I'm essentially able to create a sense of leverage where we can uh, say, well, hey, look, this is why we need to make the video. If you're willing to put in this amount of money, this problem will be solved. That's really oversimplifying it, but like in brief, that's something I wish I'd learned earlier. And yeah, basic negotiation skills. That's what I wish I'd learned. One thing I wish I had done as a freelance videographer was create a six month buffer. And by that, I mean calculate my minimum living cost for one month and then times up by six. I wish I had that amount of money sort of in the background so that I could negotiate harder when it comes to projects and also just not accept work and say no to projects that aren't gonna benefit necessarily my portfolio or my network. I spent so much and like so much time just making and taking on projects that were always not really portfolio building and were projects that were just not that 
well paid. I couldn't negotiate strongly on the price, knowing that I needed the money to just pay for uh, my life. And so when you have a six month buffer or sort of a four month buffer, depending on how you are um, with money and what your relationship to money is like, uh, I started to realize that I could, you know, go into negotiations and speak about prices and pricing of, of projects with less fear and I had this sort of psychological cushion in which I feel confident and I can feel like okay I can say no to this project and I can ask for double this project's uh, budget and as soon as I knew that I didn't need this project and I had my buffer and could survive without this project then I could feel more confident and push my rate and push my rate up and ask for more without the fear of you know being broke or you know losing this project and the psychological strength to this is just crazy uh so this is something i wish i had done earlier but anyways i'm gonna go back to the uh the actual setup now <sighs> the next point mistaking my day rate for the actual production rate this sounds really fucking stupid but when it comes to making a production, there's a lot of money that goes into a production that has nothing to do with how much you should be getting paid for your services. So by this, I mean, I would charge 850 for like a video and not take into consideration that I needed to pay for petrol, I needed to pay for like my food and all these other things. And then by the end of it, I would have like 200 euros or something for myself, which is really dumb. But like, these are things that I had to go through and I fucked up on because I didn't understand business. And the main thing to solve this or the solution for this has been for me is to know your service and your product inside out. I can kind of segue now onto the next point, which is that I didn't and never did understand my business processes and my services. An example that I use all the time today is a pre-production process. I have a very clear to-do list that goes through the steps that I need to take in order to pre in order to pre-produce a project. So I do this all in Notion. It's just like a free app that allows you to organize your thoughts and stuff. And this is where I manage all of my uh, production processes. And I write down, for example, calls with client, figuring out what the date is, working backwards from the date. And the real benefit to doing this is that I know now how much I'm going to spend on doing this part of the process, how long it's going to take. And then I also have this as a form of feedback for the client where I can justify and show a client where my time is going and why I'm charging so much. For example, someone could say, hey, Nika, why are you charging 500 euros for pre-production? Like, what does that mean? Um, because we have to remember that as a videographer, we do the show all the time, but clients perhaps don't know the steps and what exactly needs to go into making a project happen. And so I can just transparently show them, hey, like, this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna spend 30 minutes on this call. I'm gonna spend 25 minutes making this like mood board. I'm gonna spend this, 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 this. And then suddenly like, yeah, there's a sense of trust developed between me and the client and then there's also an understanding where uh, the client is educated because they realize what goes into making this project and so I can justify my price and that's something I wish I'd done earlier because quite frankly having that as a backbone to the business is really 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 important and a time saver and a life saver. The next thing for me also that I f***ed up on that there's going to be a lot of mixed opinions about this I know is like working for friends, not working with friends necessarily. I always try to work with friends when it comes to project, but working for friends when it's you working and creating a product or a video for them, it can always get a little bit tricky uh, from my experience at least. But the only reason that I let it get tricky was because as a young person trying to make videos, I did not know how to set any sort of boundaries. Oftentimes from my interactions, friends have, uh, you know, always try to push a little bit more like saying, oh yeah, can you just like edit this? Can you just change this a little bit? And you know, I've, like succumb to that and been like okay yeah sure you're my friend like i'm gonna do this so an example of this now how i would treat this differently is i set very very clear boundaries and so when i send them uh my proposal i have like very clearly for the project that i will only do two revisions and anything after that you'll have to pay my hourly rate and i would stick to that these are just things i wish i'd learned as a as a young person trying to stick to boundaries and not sort of end up working on a project where your mate says hey like can you just change this and this and then six hours later you find yourself being like like I've done so much more work than I needed to or you know I wish I worked with people who are much more experienced than me 
earlier on. I wish I had found more mentors. I had and developed over the years a few mentors, which was amazing. I think this is one of the most important things is having someone to go to when you don't know what the f to do. One time I got asked from a travel company that they wanted to do a buyout on some of my footage, a buyout when someone asks to buy your footage to use it and license it and use it on their campaigns or whatever. And I just didn't know like how much to charge. Unfortunately, you know, I had a mentor, someone who uh, I trust, but who's very experienced in the production world to say like, hey, how much should I charge for this? And I wish I just had developed and, and created a network of people who I could ask more questions uh, like this about. My last point is I wish I had worked with more people earlier on in my career rather than just going at it alone, solo, trying to make it work for so long. The reason I say this is because the fundamental skill, I believe, for developing and creating successful videos and films is the skill of communicating and conveying an idea. Communicating with other people and conveying what is in your head out to the rest of the team so that you can make something that is bigger than just yourself. And for me, I did this for so long, I just sort of just tried to make videography and make videos by myself when I, I really needed the support and the experience of other people. I've worked with other producers, other cinematographers, and there's always just something to be learned and there's always a better way to make something happen. And just experiencing that with other people has allowed me to communicate my ideas better as a director and also learned me, learned me <laughs> in fact, too long I've spent in Germany now. And I think it's really important to learn how to lead and how to communicate, especially if you are working as a videographer or working as a director, if you're interacting with talents, if you're interacting with team and crew members, that's just my opinion. I hope some of this has helped. And if it hasn't, then Subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you very much for watching and take it easy. Have a lovely day. Peace.